Hi everyone, welcome to Pearl's Kitchen. Before becoming a Hindu, a Muslim, a Sikh or a Christian, let's all become good human beings. Amen. Today I'm going to show you how to make Anglo-Indian stew. I'm going to make it with lamb. You can make it with beef if you want. And the ingredients in the pot I've got, because I'm making quite a lot, you could make half of it if you want. I've got two ladles spoon of oil in the pot and in here, and we need extra ginger for it. So I've got around three inches of ginger that I've peeled and cut into small bits. And here I've got around five big, five to six big green um, black cardamom. And I've got around six cinnamon sticks. And I've got around 15, 15 to 20 peppercorns and around 10 to 12 cloves. And I've got green chilies, around six whole dried green chili, um, red chili sorry not green red chilies and we've got four or five bay leaves and i've got four large onions chopped you need lots of onions in here and i've got four large tomatoes chopped and like i said i'm going to make it with lamb so i've got a mixture of, of breast and a mixture of leg in there and the other ingredients we'll need is here i've got new potatoes the long ones i uh, just cut it in lengthways so you just cut it in quarters and I've got a cauliflower, I've got a cup of frozen peas and I've got carrots, three carrots that I've cut into big pieces. We need coriander and I've got uh, atta, that's chapati flour, a fistful of atta or half a cup of atta. I'll show you what to do with this and we'll need salt and we'll need water and you can use any vegetables you want. You could put beans in if you want or muli or beetroot, anything you want to add, you can add, but I make my stew this way. So the first thing, as soon as the oil gets hot, we put all the onions in there. You need a nice big pot for this, because there's lots of things going on here. And now you fry the onions on full flame or until the onions get brown. Okay, now that the onions are nice and brown, we need to add the ginger, the chopped ginger, and fry that with the onions, just for a minute or so. And then you add all the red chilies and all the dry garam masala. Now people, if you don't want to Put the garam masala whole, you can put it in a muslin bag and then put it in there if you don't want to start taking bits and pieces out. Fry that for a little bit and then add all the meat. Okay. Once the meat's in, you give it a stir so it cooks. It's all coated and now you put the salt, salt to taste because it's a big pot of stew so I'll put at least two and a half teaspoons of salt. And now you just keep frying the, keep stirring the you know, meat and the meat will release its juices and keep frying the meat in its own juices. This will take at least 10 minutes. You can see the meat's nice and brown now. So we're going to add the tomatoes and now stirring occasionally let the tomatoes fry with the meat till the tomatoes get nice and mushy. You can see all the tomatoes have disappeared, they're all gone mushy now. So we can add the water now because we need the lamb to cook. So. Just enough to cover the lamb. And then you just put the lid back, put the lid on and now put it on a medium flame. As soon as it starts boiling, put it on a medium flame 
and let it cook till the meat gets like around 95% tender. Okay, the lamb's now around 95% tender, so we can add the vegetables now. And I've also added extra five to six green chilies. That's optional, I like the stew nice and hot. So now start adding all the vegetables. Carrots, potatoes, whatever vegetables you're using. Peas, cauliflower. Cauliflower really comes nice in the stew. It's my favorite vegetable. And then you give all this a stir. Keep the gas on a high. And then we're going to add the water. Now you need quite a lot of water in the stew to cook all the vegetables. So. And there you go. So, yeah, that's. You need to cover all the vegetables and the meat with the water and the main ingredients. I forgot to tell you how much meat I used. It was around just a bit over a kilo of lamb. So now what? Now you put the lid on and keep the flame on high. And now let this come to a rolling boil. And as soon as it starts boiling, then I'll tell you what we have to do. Okay, while we're waiting for the water to come to a boil, remember I said to you we use atta or plain flour. I've got chapati flour, so now we're going to make this into a batter. So just do it with your hand. That's how I do it. more like a runny liquid batter because as soon as the water in the stew comes to a boil then we need to add this and that works as a thickener but using the chapati flour somehow gives it a lovely nutty sort of flavor like a roasty sort of flavor so yeah that's how you need to make the batter and now keep that aside and now we'll wait for the water to come to a boil Okay, now that the stew is starting to boil, we need to add the, the atta in. As soon as you see it starting to bubble, you just pour all this atta in and keep stirring. Now give that a stir. And now you let this cook on a medium heat and uh, let it be on a rolling boil till all the carrots and the potatoes and the cauliflower is cooked. Okay, our stew is ready. I checked all the vegetables and they're nice and tender. Look at it, it's still bubbling away. So now we're going to put the gas off and we're going to finish it off with some coriander. Put one lot and give it a stir. Look at it. it, looks absolutely delicious. I remember my mum making even a bigger pot than this and by evening nothing's left. She had some very hungry kids. Okay, so just put the rest of the coriander and put the lid back on and like I always say, let it rest for 20 minutes or half an hour and then we'll dish it out. Okay, our stew has been resting now. So we can serve it, you can take a big bowl or a plate and take bits of everything in there. So there's our stew ready for serving. Now when it goes on the table all you need to do is garnish it with a few more leaves of coriander. Uh, that's it. So that's our Anglo-Indian stew. It's really, really delicious. Once you make it, your whole family will just love it. Now this can be eaten with rice and it can be eaten with chapati. Not so good with naan. And my mum used to actually take a white slice, white bread, 
and just break the bread and soak it in there it is really really delicious with bread so you go and try it and i'm going to eat this with rice because i'm a big rice fan so don't forget to write your comments below and share my link to your friends and ask them to subscribe and i shall see you next time with some more delicious cooking